Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, we just worship you in this house. You deserve hallelujah because it is the highest praise. And we honor you right now, Lord God. We take this moment to worship you, to exalt you, Lord God, and to put you in the position where you belong, and that's in the highest place of authority. We declare hallelujah. That means that we trust you over any and every other thing that's occurring, Lord God. We believe that you are with us. We believe that you are working for us and you are working in us, Lord God. And we trust you to watch over your word, to bring it to pass in our lives, Lord God. We make a point to honor you today with the fruit of our lips, Lord God. We give you the worship. We give you the honor and we give you the praise. We elevate your name today, Lord God. We elevate you, Jehovah. We elevate you, Elohim. Father God, we worship you today, Lord. We thank you for being a good God. Hallelujah. And we take this time out to just say thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you've purposed and planned before the foundation of the world. And help us to trust you more, Lord God. Help us to trust you with our very selves, with our being, with our spirits, with our souls, with our bodies. Lord, help us to give ourselves completely to you because you're trustworthy and you're dependable and you're reliable, Lord God. So those areas where we have doubts, those areas that we have concerns, those areas that are keeping us up at night, Lord God, we entrust those to you. Because you deserve them, because you you can take our cares, you can take our anxiety, you can take our worries and we can cast them on you because you care for us, Lord God. And so we say hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name, Lord God. Hallelujah to your name, Lord. In the midst of it, Lord God. Hallelujah to your name, Lord God. When we don't see a way through, hallelujah to your name, Lord God. When it's not working out the way we thought it would, hallelujah to your name, Lord God. When everybody that we trusted turned their backs on us, Lord, we say hallelujah to your name, Lord God. When the family is not like we wanted it to be, we say hallelujah to your name, Lord God. When we're not pleased with where we are personally, we say hallelujah to your name, Lord God. Because we trust you, glory to God. We depend on you, Lord God. And we'll stop looking at other sources that cannot supply what only you can. Hallelujah to your name, Lord God. Hallelujah to your name, Lord God. Today, we make the decision to put you in the prime position in our lives. Glory to God. We place you back on the throne where you belong in our lives, Lord God. And we thank you that because you are in your rightful place, everything that you desire for us to do, 
everywhere you desire for us to go, everything you desire for us to be will be made manifest because now with you in the proper position, we are in divine alignment with your will. Hallelujah. And let your will be done on earth as it always is in heaven. So we worship you. Glory to God. We honor you. We magnify your name, Lord God. And Father, as we prepare to move into the next phase of worship, we just want you to tabernacle in this place. Remain in this place, Lord God. We know you're in us, but we want you to to commune with us and fellowship with us in this service today, Lord God. I pray that every person present and every person that hears this word taught, that experiences this worship service, will experience you, Lord God. We're not here for show. We're not here to check off a, a, a box on our list of things to do, Lord God. We are here for you. Because you said forsake not the assembling of yourselves and you said of two shall agree as touching anything it shall be done. So, Father God, we stand here agreeing for your presence to be made manifest. To get answers to questions that have been plaguing us. To get direction to know where to go and when to move and how to move, Lord God. Everything we need, we receive it right now in your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for the answers to questions we haven't even asked yet. Thank you for the directions to places we haven't even seen yet. Thank you for provision for issues we haven't even had arise yet, Lord God. Thank you for being God, for being Jehovah Jireh, our provider, not the world's. You're our provider. Hallelujah. So we trust you. We depend on you and we declare hallelujah to your name. It's in Jesus name that we pray. It's in Jesus name that we decree and it's in Jesus name that we have the authority to say these things and let it be done. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We'll have a seat in this house. Glory to God. It's good to see everyone in the place today. Blessings on you in Jesus name. I'm excited. Y'all say you say that every week, Pastor Jay. Well, I tell the truth every week. Every week I'm excited to come before you and bring the word I believe is going to be a blessing for you. I've got a great kingdom nugget that I think is going to stir you up. And I also have a great word. I believe we're finally going to be able. I'm going to reintroduce our lesson series, Furnished in Abundance. I've been trying to teach that thing for about two or three weeks. And the spirit of God has been moving in another direction. But I believe. That the spirit of God is going to allow me to start to teach on furnished in abundance. And I believe it's going to be really, really good. I started like two, three weeks ago, didn't get out of my introduction. And the spirit of God moved mightily the past week as well. So I'm looking forward to diving into this. I was I was uh, in the bedroom yesterday, last night, late last night. And I had my because I like to spend time with my lessons. I like to look over them and, 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 and meditate on them and see what God wants to do and see what he wants to tweak and see what he wants to change and melody my wife she picked my paper up because i had it in the bed next to my laptop and she picked my paper up she said you got enough color on this thing i had different notes written and different things highlighted because i want to make sure that i give you everything that god gives me and so i think it's going to really 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 be a blessing for you before i do that if you need a tithe offering envelope raise your hands the ushers will get one to you if you're watching us online and you desire to give you can do so by going to www www.vtfchurch.net click on the right hand corner of the screen it will show you the online giving tab you can give safely and securely that way and we also have people that desire to send their offerings or whatnot to us via the mail so you can do that care of victory through faith church p.o box 974 Bessemer, alabama 3502 Two, one. For those that are online and will watch this later, I want to thank you in advance for your giving. I want to share this kingdom nugget with you. It's, it's, it's four steps I got to give you. It's, it's what God wants me to introduce. It's a word that I received from God. And actually, he spoke this to me 
uh, almost three years ago in November of 2019. So it, it really is about a half a page that he gave me. But there were particular things that he highlighted for me this morning and late last night to share with you. So I'm going to do that. Then I want us to join in in a brief confession. And then I'm going to give you some faith fuel. I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures to stir you up to really get the heart of what God is communicating to us today, because I really think that we need to embrace this so God can do what he wants to do in us, for us, through us. Amen. So my first statement is this. God has already prospered us. Say already. already. God has already prospered us. We must faith our way into his divine provision. He's already prospered you. We have to faith our way into what God has already done. And I've shared with I've shared this with you before that a lot of the times we pray from the wrong perspective. We pray asking God to do a thing when really God has already done it. By faith, we receive it. We believe it. We receive it. We decree it. And then we experience what God has done. So he wanted me to start off with that to let you know he has already prospered us. And we have to faith our way into he use it as an action word. We got to faith our way into his divine provision. You know, Apostle Wood said, and he said this years ago, and he first said, I kind of, I heard it, but because I heard the term so much, I, I didn't really dwell on it. But Apostle Wood said he doesn't really use the term supernatural. And when I, and you know, if you watch TV or if you listen to radio, if you, if you hear ministers teach, you'll hear supernatural all the time. I got books I read all the time and it's supernatural laced all the way through it. Now, let me Wow. OK, let me share this with you. Supernatural in and of itself, I don't think is an evil term or a bad term. I just think it can be it can be mixed in with what other people believe, because you can be a non-Christian and still say that you believe for something supernatural to occur. So uh, for us as believers, I said, well, after I processed what Apostle said, I said, well, Lord, how do you want me to say it? Because I read so much material. I hear so much music. If I'm not saying supernatural, what should I say? He says, say what it is. It's divine. It's divine. It's divine provision. It's divine movement. It's divine instruction. So if you hear a man or woman of God say supernatural, you don't have to correct them. And say, well, my pastor said <laughs> you don't have to go through all that. I'm just educating my flock. Amen. Amen. I want you all to be able to give God his due. Yeah. And so when we see God moving in our lives, yeah, yeah, you can say supernatural. And technically, if you looked up certain terms in the concordance, you would find it defined as supernatural. But I just don't like limiting God that way. If God is involved, it's divine. And so I like to say it's a divine move of God. And it's his divine. We have to faith our way into his divine provision, not supernatural provision, divine provision. God ordained. That's good. Divine provision is God ordained and God supplied provision. Amen. Hallelujah. So listen to the word of God that he gave me. November 3rd, I like to give y'all the day and time so y'all know how God is speaking. He gave me this November the 13th, 2019 at 6 10 a.m. He said there is. Oh, glory to God. Ooh, that hit my spirit. Thank you, Lord. He said there is more in store in glory for you. Say me. me. Oh, man. So the first part of this is God's letting us know that there's something for us that we haven't tapped into yet because he said there's more in store in glory for you. So he's got our attention, right? Listen to the next part. I've already prospered you. Oh, now you got to realize the context of this is God speaking to me in my den almost three years ago. And from three years ago, now he's allowing me to share with you. So he's saying, I've already prospered you. Faith your way into my divine provision. So now you see why I gave you my introduction, because that's what God told me almost three years ago. He said there is more in store in glory for you. I've already prospered you. Faith your way into my divine provision. He didn't say work your way into it. He didn't say earn your way into it. He said it's already some laid up for you. Faith your way into it. Oh, whoo, you got to get this. Okay, because we, we love going to the beach. I try to get there at least twice a year. 
And, and when we go to the beach, once we leave the house, it's because we've already made provisions for where we'll stay, how long we'll stay and where we'll be when we get there. So what God is saying is, oh, Jesus, he said, faith your way into my divine provision like you faith your way into the beach. You already know where you're going. You already know what you need. You already know what's supplied. You don't go to Florida in doubt. You don't go to Florida wondering if God's going to honor what he said he would do. I don't go to Florida wondering, well, is the condo going to honor their agreement? I mean, I know they gave us a confirmation number and I know they already took out the funds from the account, but do they like us? <laughs> Did we do everything right? Did we behave properly? Because if we ain't do everything right, they might not let us into the condo. No, we go with boldness. Because we know, oh, glory, because we know transactions have already taken place for us to experience what we desire. Jesus. So what God is saying is I've already supplied what you need. I just need you to embrace the transaction of faith. I got what you need. I need your faith. Glory to God. God says, I got what you need. I need your faith. Oh, Faith your way into it. I've already got what you I've already prepared what you need before you knew you had a need. And he said, I want to release it to you, but I just can't release everything I got for you on you because it would ruin you. You got to faith your way into it. Oh, Jesus, if you knew what I had for you, you'd never worry again, said the Lord. (laughs) <laughs> but you got to faith your way into it. Oh, Jesus, listen to it. So say this confession with me. There is more, there is more in, store, in store in glory, in glory for, me. for me. You got to make that thing personal. Say it again. There is more, there is more in, store, in store in glory, in glory for me. Hallelujah. Now, that reminds me, I got a good friend that uh, a while back, maybe a year or two ago, they were moving, maybe a little longer than that. They were moving and they had to place some things in storage. Well, he knew he wanted the things, but he knew he didn't know where these things would go in the new house. So he placed them in storage until he was ready for them. Hear me what I'm saying. If you are born There is already storage facilities in heaven with the divine resources necessary for you to never lack another day in your life. But say, but But. however, say, however, you must faith your way into it. That's why he said the just shall live by faith. Not by fear, not by worry, not by earning, not by working, not by doing all these things. You can work, you can earn, that's fine. I'm not against it. But he said, for my justified ones, for the ones that I've declared righteous, for the ones that I've adopted as my own children, to live on the, ooh, to live on the God level, you got to walk by faith and not by sight. I never said that before, to live on the God level. Because we are, he said, you are God's. Little G, say little G. Say, I'm a little G God. I look like big G God because I'm made in his image and his likeness. Whoo, whoo, Jesus. So in order for you to live on the God level, you got to walk by faith. You got to take what he said at its face value. If he said it, I believe it. I don't care how many droves of people don't believe. Like Apostle said, I don't care how many unbelieving believers doubt it. (laughs) I believe there's more in store, in glory for me. Jesus. Okay, here's your faith few because it's just my nugget. This ain't my message, but my message is connected to this. So let me get through this nugget so I can give you the message. Here's your faith few. Ephesians chapter one. I didn't get this to you, A.V. I don't think I did. I might have. I don't know. I have a flow on this morning, so I don't know. Y'all might have. Do y'all have that? Ephesians chapter one. Did I get that to y'all, A.V.? We'll find out in a minute, won't we? Ephesians chapter one, look at this. Now he said, there is more in store in glory for you. I've already prospered you. 
faith your way into my divine provision. Now, here's your faith for you. You need to write this down so you can meditate on this because you might be excited to hear it today, but you got to meditate on the word so you can draw out the truth of it so you can apply it to your own life. Ephesians chapter one, verse three says, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed. Y'all know what I'm about to say. What tense is that? Past, Past present or future. So if God hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, do we do we need to be praying to God to be blessed? Huh? We were a little hesitant on that because sometimes we still pray, Lord, bless me. Bless me indeed. Enlarge my tail. That's all right. But you got to understand. Oh, you're already blessed because the scripture says God, our father hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Oh, check this out. In heavenly places. Now remember, he said there is more in store in where? In glory for you. What is glory? Heavenly places, free from decay, free from corruption, free from greed. He said, I'm keeping what I got for you up here with me. And when you trust me, you'll faith your way into what you need for today, for the moment, for the need. Now, Ephesians chapter three. Look at this. I love it when the Lord connects scriptures. Ephesians chapter three, verse 20. We know this very well. We quote it all the time. It says now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above. Say that exceeding, exceeding. abundantly abundantly above. Well, Pastor Jay, how is he going to do exceeding abundantly above? Because when you're operating in faith, you got to make up your mind and decide in your heart what you want from God. And he says, when you decide what you want from me, I'm going to kick in on the God level and I'm going to do exceeding abundantly above whatever you ask for or thought. Because I oh, just that's good. I just need a baseline to work with. I'm a far outdo what you request of me anyway, but I got to have something to work with. I need a faith foundation to watch over and perform it. But when I perform it, because I'm an overachiever, said the Lord, I'm going to do exceeding abundantly above whatever you asked me for Amen. or thought possible yeah. or ever dream could take place in your life. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to faith your way into that. You can't hope your way in. You can't cry your way in. You can't earn your way in. You can't pity your way in. You got to faith your way in. Amen. Listen to what it says in the Amplified Classic Version. Verse 20 of Ephesians chapter three says now to him who by or in consequence of the action of his power. So it's because of what he did, not because of what we do. Mm. Who that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose. So his purpose is to do far more than whatever we could ask for a thing. So his purpose is to do more than what we can think of. OK, wow. Check this out. Is it up here? Oh, I love that term to carry out his purpose and do. Look at that word. Super abundantly. That's the best man could do to come up with what God was trying to say. They, 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 not abundantly. <laughs> Super abundant, stupid abundantly, just crazy, crazily bad past what you thought you could ever want, desire, or hope for. It says super abundantly, far over and above all that we dare ask. Ooh, I dare you. You ever heard anybody tell you that? I dare you. You ought to tell yourself, I dare you to ask God for it. I dare you. I bet you won't. I dare you to trust God for it. I dare you to act like you healed. I dare you to act like you know your purpose. I dare you to walk in wealth, health, healing, and hope. I dare you. I bet you better dare yourself. <laughs> Woo! Above all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. That about sums it up. So whatever you could pray for. Whatever you could desire, whatever you can think of, whatever you hope for and whatever you dream, God says, I got it Be. I can do far over and above whatever you ask for, hope, desire, dream. He said, whatever you come up with, I've already covered it. Amen. Jesus. 
And let's go to old and gold in Philippians chapter four, verse 19, because we got to give you scriptures to support what he said. There is more in store and glory for you. I've already prospered you faith your way into my divine provision. So if he's saying I've already prospered you, that means he's already supplied something for me. He's already done for me what needs to be done for me to live on the God level. Jesus, that's resonating in my spirit. Philippians chapter four. Verse 19 says, but my God, who, who he got to be your God? You can't be grandmama God. You can't be granddaddy God. You can't be daddy God. And my dad didn't know a good God, but he has to be my God. He has to be my personal savior. I have to know him for myself. I have to trust him for myself. I have to believe him for myself. And when he is my God, then my God shall supply all your need according to whose riches? His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Remember what he said? There is more in store in where? Glory for you. And then we got the promise right here. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So now we know something about God. Now we know where God account is. His riches are where? In glory. Why do we have access to them? Because we're in Christ Jesus. Now, check this out. Jesus did all the qualification. We just got to faith our way into it. OK, 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 OK. Slow down, Holy Ghost. Let me get this. It says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches. So God's going to supply not based on what we can handle, but based on who he is. God's not going to supply based on what we can earn. God's not going to supply based on our education. God's not going to supply based on our personal network, who we know. God's going to supply according to his riches. Or another way to say it, God is going to supply out of his riches, not ours. Ooh. So you can rest about your account. You can stop tripping over your account because he's not going to supply out of your account. He's going to supply out of his account. Who? So stop comparing yourself to other people because your account doesn't matter to God. All you got to do is look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of faith. And if you faith your way into his divine supply, there is nothing you will lack for another day in your life. Jesus, you can't lack when you're living on the God level. Woo. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So he says, I'm going to do it for you because of my son. And all you got to do is faith your way into it. All you got to do is faith your way into it. Believe I am who I say I am. Believe I've promised what I said I promised and believe I'll do for you what I said I would do and faith your way into it. Don't be moved by how you feel. Don't be moved by how it looks. Don't be moved by history and what has happened in the past. Only be moved by what my word declares. Faith your way into it, even if your head is 180 degrees away from where your heart is, because faith is not a product of your head. Faith is a product of your heart. If ooh, whew, as long as you don't speak doubt and unbelief, you can have doubts in your head, but still have belief in your heart. That's why that man said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. I believe what you said, Jesus, because you're standing here talking to me. But what I believe, you know, I confirm it with God when I get to heaven. I believe what that man was saying is I believe what you're saying because you're standing in front of me saying it. But help my unbelief. Help my history of disappointment. Help my history of failure. Help every time I tried it and failed. I believe you, Jesus, but help this history of poor choices that I've made that are telling me you won't do it. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. I believe in you. Help me with me. I believe that's what I don't trust me. I don't believe me, God. He said, I believe you. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Help my doubting. Help my concerns. Help my shame. Help my guilt. Help my worry. Help my lies. Help my cheating, God. I believe you because you're standing in front of me saying it. But he said, help my unbelief. What would he say? He said, God, you don't realize, Jesus, I got some issues. Oh, oh, I speak this by the spirit of God. He was saying, Jesus, really, I believe I'm part of the reason why he's sick in the first place. 
I made some bad choices. Let me share this with you right now by the spirit of God. There is nothing happening to your child as a result of what you did or did not do. The devil is a lie. The blessing of the Lord is on your life. And so therefore, that negative thing that you perceive in your child, that negative thing that you've seen demonstrated in your child is not the chickens or the roosters coming back home. It's the enemy trying to rob you of the generational blessing on your life. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Because really. We don't like to say that because we don't want to we don't want to look a certain way. But sometimes we're fearful that what our kids are going through is from choices we made. Things God told us to do that we didn't do. Places God told us to go that we didn't go. And so we never articulated to anybody because that's one of the softest, darkest place of our hearts. It doesn't get much light. But in reality, we blame ourselves. But I hear the spirit of the Lord saying it's not and it has never been about you and what you've done. How could it be when he says, behold, look upon this as truth. All things are become new. You're a new creation in Christ. Old stuff passes. Well, Pastor Jay, wait a minute. I might have you on this one, Pastor. What happens if I did the old stuff, even though I was a new creation in Christ? From God's perspective, you never did it. How can I say that? Because whatever you did after your salvation experience is under the blood. And so from God's perspective, there is no penalty penalty to be paid when there is no sin that was demonstrated because the blood of Jesus has covered us and cleansed us from all sin. That's how powerful the grace of God is. But religion will try to shame you into repentance, try to get an outward demonstration that you trust and love God. And you don't need no outward demonstration. Believe it in your heart. And then trust the spirit of God to lead you correctly so you can see the manifestation of what the word has already declared. Amen. How we got on that, I do not know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yo, I do know because we're flowing with the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we speak over our children from this day forth. When we see those things that we saw in ourselves, <laughs> that we we overly analyze and we and we get real aggressive about it, because if we got any say so on it, they ain't going to do what we did. They're not going to experience what we experience. Hey, speak grace, grace to the mountain. Just release the grace of God over. Say, I release the grace of God over your life. You won't go down the road I went. You won't make the mistakes I made and you won't experience the limits that I experienced. Yeah. Speak life. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me let me move on. Father God, we thank you. (laughs) We thank you, Father God, for for giving us what we need to hear when we need to hear. And we, we we're we're eternally grateful. And Father God, we thank you for the tithers. We thank you for the givers. We thank you for sowers of seed, Lord, because we trust you and your supply. We believe that all of our needs are met. You are our shepherd. We shall not want. We shall not lack. We won't be in need for any good thing because you've already provided ahead of time. And we position ourselves by faith to be in alignment with your divine supply. Lord, I thank you. That the blessing is operating on our lives fully, eradicating all lack, eradicating all fear, eradicating all doubt and concern and looking only to you, Jesus, so that our faith can be strengthened and we can walk and live on the God level. We believe it and we receive it and we thank you for it now in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Well, let's move. Let's move. Let's move. I got to get into this. I got to get into this Re- reintroduction. Say furnished in abundance. Furnished in Hallelujah. Abundance. Let's go to Mark chapter 14 and let's start this off. What I love about it, y'all might think that when I'm not able to teach something, 
when the spirit of God moves differently and I'm not able to teach it the way I thought I would, you might think I'll just be like, well, I can I can coast. I just read the same thing next week and I can I can rest and relax. No, I've got more now than I did two weeks ago when I thought I was going to teach it because I always go back and want to hear what the spirit because now I got two more weeks of life experience that the spirit of God can draw from to minister to me along the lines of what we're sharing. So in Mark chapter 14, I shared with you a couple of weeks ago that reading this text of scripture is where this sermon came from, where this message came from. In verse chapter 12, we're going to read from the King James Version, verses 12 through 15. It says, and the first day of unleavened bread. Y'all ready? Everybody there? It says, in the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, referring to the Passover lamb, his disciples, his is a ref reference to Jesus. Jesus' disciples said unto him, where will thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? Verse 13. And he sendeth forth <laughs> two of his disciples and saith unto them, go ye into the city and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. Verse 14 says, and wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house. The master saith, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? Verse 15 is the operative verse. And he will show you a large, say large. large. He will show you a large upper room. <laughs> Glory, say large again. You know, I, I have I have a I have a, a little small piece of information to say that God hit me with. You ever had God say something to you and you got a little upset with God? Like, how dare you? I'm trying to walk by faith. I'm trying. How you gonna tell me that? I thought we were cool. I think I was just driving down the freeway, and the Spirit of God told me just as clear as I'm talking to you. He said, "You're thinking too low." I said, "What?" He said, "You're thinking too low." I said, wait a minute, because <laughs> he didn't give me any context. I wasn't listening to a sermon. I wasn't reading the Bible. I was just on the freeway. I probably was listening to ESPN on the radio. And he said, you're thinking too low. And I did not know what he meant. I knew enough to know that he was speaking to me. So I wrote it down and I put it in my wallet when I was able to come to a stop. I said, what do you mean? I'm thinking too low. And then I end up coming to verse 15. And he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared there made ready for us. The reason why some of our prayers have not been answered is because we're thinking too low and we're asking too small. What do you mean, Pastor Jay? We're asking on the level that he can do. Or we're asking on the level that we can do if we just budget it in. Oh, Lord, God, I want you to bless me with I want you to bless me with the, the I, look, I ain't trying to I ain't trying to manipulate you. This just came up. I want you to bless me with the most tastiest pound cake I ever had in my life. Well, really, if you just budget for a couple of weeks, you can go buy you a pound cake. But we but we won't say, oh, God, oh, I, 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 Lord. Me and Mel say somebody with some house shoes on made this. <laughs> we, we got look, we got our last uh, pound cake from Mama Jack. We said she must have had on her house coat when she cooked this, baby. You got to have, you can't wear regular clothes when you make the kind of pound cake she made. <laughs> she put her feet in. It was ankles and knees and a little bit, little bit of thigh and that thing, boy. So I ain't trying to trick you into making another pound cake just hit my spirit. <laughs> but really, if we budget for a couple of weeks, we can go buy the pound cake. So a lot of the times God doesn't really get involved like we need him to because we're asking too small or we're thinking too low, as he told me. Why are we thinking too low? Because if I get out here on faith and it takes too long, I can figure something out myself. So really what we're doing is we say we're walking by faith, but we're also carving in a trap door just in case we need to escape. <laughs> so really what he's saying is when he was saying Jason you're thinking too low he was saying period whatever you see that you need that you think you can handle you're thinking too low <sighs> oh oh because it's not giving me the opportunity to get involved like I need to oh, oh well, well okay 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 I'll say this because you can either continue to think low and hit and miss with the manifestation 
or you can step outside of how you're out because comfort zone is so worn out now. I almost don't like saying you can step outside of your easy place. You know how we can live on a level where it's just easy. I'm, I ain't trying to rock the boat. I ain't trying to ruffle any feathers. I'm just going to do me. I'm going to make sure I'm good. If you ever have said in your life, I'm just going to do me and make sure I'm good. You know, you're not in faith because that's a selfish declaration. Because we're not here to just do us. We are blessed to be a what? So when we say I'm just going to do me, we already know somewhere, some kind of way we've been deceived. Because we shouldn't live to just do us. Yeah, God's going to take care of us first. But we don't stop when he takes care of us. He sees to it that, yeah, we're taken care of. And then out of the excess, hallelujah. We're going to talk about it a little later. Out of the overflow. We look to see who we can bless. OK, God, you've already come through for me. Glory to God. But what am I supposed to do with these 12 baskets full of fragments left over? Bless the people. <laughs> you should never just believe enough for you. Because that that defies our mission. We are blessed to be a blessing. I want more for greed. No. If you're doing it for greed, don't even get God involved. That's a that's a you endeavor. But if I want to be a blessing to those I come into contact with, if I want to be a light in the kingdom, then I need more than what. I, oh, glory. I need more than what I need. Wow. I need more than what I need so I can use the excess as seed. Wow. Yeah. wow thank you, Lord. You need more than what you need so you can use the excess for seed. <laughs> it's never come out like that before. You need more than what you need so you can use the excess for seed. God doesn't want you sowing your mortgage money into a ministry. Oh, Lord. <laughs> God don't want you using your light bill for pastor's appreciation. Oh, Jesus. No. You sow out of the excess. Do you know how many... Come now, Melody said my voice get loud and it cares and I don't be aware. So I heard myself reverberate off the wall. Let me calm down because I get upset when people of God are taken advantage of. Do you know how many Bible believing children of God have been taken advantage of because it was just a pastor in the pulpit because he knew a bill was due? And do you know how people people because y'all love y'all pastor, right? I can tell in y'all eyes, when y'all walk in, y'all just, just be loving y'all past. I see it in your eyes. Y'all just love y'all some past, and I love you back. And sometimes people take advantage of that love, which causes people to give in a time from a position they probably should not have been given in. Or they were guilted into giving. No, 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 no. That's allocated for something else. That that that's grandmama light bill money. We ain't supposed to be saying, uh, uh, it's two more hundred dollars in the house. If OK, profit, then declare who hand is in. Declare who's going to give it. Declare who's going to walk up and sow it. Don't be these generic random. Oh, God just showed me. It's 50 more dollars on the left side of the church. Check your wallet, pastor. No, 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 no. We ain't doing all that. Show the people how to prosper to the level that they can bless people out of the excess. Do you know how many people have lost cars and lost houses and, and got in? Do you know how many marriages have been tore up because the wife took all the money to the church? But guess what? The husband didn't see you taking the money to the church. The husband saw you taking money to a pastor that was pimping the system because men see stuff from afar. <laughs> That's why I love when my brothers come up in here because if you ain't got no brothers in church, there's something wrong because brothers peep game. They might not say nothing. But they know some ain't right. We pick up on it. Some ain't no. So no, no. You go when he tell you go if you want to. <laughs> I'll be when you get back. We gotta be careful of that. When really we should be teaching people how to live from God's perspective. So there's always more than what we need. So hallelujah, my need is met, and now I've got extra to bless. 
Now I've got more to be a blessing with because God has furnished me in abundance. Oh, glory to God. Y'all getting this? Look at what Jesus said. Now, if, if, now some people believe, <laughs> some religious people believe that Jesus was, was struggling here on earth. That Jesus was one of the poorest people to ever walk the planet. I don't get it because if you do just a little deductive reasoning, how would you be one of the poorest people to ever walk the planet? But you've got a treasurer on payroll. You traveling with a treasurer. Not only that, you traveling with a thieving treasurer that had the bag long enough to be taking money out of it and not be corrected about it. The Bible tells us Judas wasn't mad because that woman put that perfume, that, that precious ointment on Jesus. Feet. She wasn't mad. He wasn't mad because it was just wetting Jesus up or it was wasteful. He was mad because he had the bag. The Bible said he was mad because he had the bag and he knew what he could have done with the proceeds from that oil that that woman just quote unquote wasted on Jesus. Jesus was. Jesus probably was the greatest giver to ever walk this planet. Because he knew I'm, I'm just here for I'm just, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm just passing through. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to be here long enough to even build a kingdom the way y'all think it needs to be built. But I know one thing, whenever there's a need, I know where to go to get my supply. Oh, Jesus, I love it. He, there were so many extraordinary ways that the first miracle, the first miracle in Cana. Go to this wedding feast. Y'all know the story. Y'all been to Sunday school when you were younger. Go to the wedding feast. They run out of wine. Mary comes to Jesus. Jesus, they don't have no wine. Jesus responded like I would have responded. What you telling me for? <laughs> it's Jesus said, yeah, look, look what, I, what you want me to do about that? My time ain't come. Why you telling me this? And, and Mary, like most mothers do, she ain't pay no attention to what Jesus said. She said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. What she was really telling Jesus was saying, you better do something. She gave him that mother finger. You better do something. <laughs> and she didn't even address Jesus again. She said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. <laughs> so Jesus is like, all right, all right, all right. Uh, these, these, these ceremonial pots y'all got for washing. Yeah, fill them up with water. Fill, fill them all up. Fill them all up. So he, feels, they, he didn't fill them up. The servants filled all the pots with water. And so Jesus says something that if it were me, I would have been like, it's time for me to clock out. This is my lunch break. I ain't, I'm not finna be the one that get dealt with when we take this to the master and we get beheaded or some worse. He said, now, dip out of those water pots and take it to the master. No, you know, when you when you hear people talk about that, they have you thinking that Jesus was over the pot saying, abracadabra, <laughs> alakazu, you love me. I'll supply for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> when those servants dipped their pots into that water pot, guess what they were carrying in their cups? Huh? Uh, nope. Bag, bag. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> when they dipped their cups into those water pots, what did each servant pull out of that pot? Don't be scared. Say it. Water. They didn't see wine when they dipped the cup into the water. They saw water. Cause why? How you know that, Pastor Jay? Because the Bible. Oh, because the Bible says as they went. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Maybe that's why it hadn't come through yet. Cause you're too busy looking at what it is, but you won't move so it can become what it needs to be. Every servant dipped their cup in that water pot and every servant pulled up water. But something about the act of faith, as they went, they gave it to the head dude in charge. And he took a sip. He said, oh, <laughs> he said, wait a minute. Paul, stop. stop. DJ, stop the music. Y'all can talk to slide later. He said, hold up. Normally, Y'all bring out the best wine first. Then when everybody good and slizzard, <laughs> you bring out the cheap stuff. <laughs> but he said, but y'all done messed around and brought out the best stuff last. You know them servers were like. 
I don't know when. I don't know if it became wine when it touched his hand. I, all I know is as they acted in obedience to what they were told to do, what wasn't what it needed to be became what it needed to be to be what was needed for the time. Who for some of us, the only reason it hasn't come through because there has not been an act of faith connected to what we've been saying. Oh, we've been saying, I believe that God supplies. I believe that I'm the head and not the tail. I believe that I prosper above and beyond. But we ain't, we're not doing anything connected to what we say we believe. Because really, it doesn't manifest until you start, <laughs> it's horrible English, until you start winting. <laughs> As you went, it'll manifest. That's, that's the faith part. When you carry in that cup, you're like, oh my goodness, well. I guess I better get on Indeed and update my resume because I know he finna fire me when I get him this water. He, spe <laughs> he specifically asked, bring me some more wine and I walk up here with some, some Dasani. Uh-oh. <laughs> I, I, was, I was thinking about a new change of pace anyway. You know, it's been a good run. It's been a good run. <laughs> I like my coworkers. I'm going to keep in contact with them. We all in a text group. I let them know where I land. But this day I'm going home with a pink slip. But it's something about doing what you're told, even when you don't understand how it's going to end up, that allows God to go beyond what you thought could have been done. Oh, that's why he told me. He said, you're thinking too low. You're thinking too low. You're trying to get me to come down here and bless your ideas. <laughs> oh, Jesus, you're trying to get me to sign off on your ideas that you came with because you can handle it if enough time was given. I'm trying to get you to come up hither to where I am and you got to trust me to get it done. OK. Let, let's let's be all the way transparent with ourselves, church. But, Lord, if I trust you, I don't know when I'm going to get it, though. You know, if we come up with it, then we know, OK, by this time I have it. Or if I if I if I set this aside for this amount of time, I can get it on this date. But if I trust God, man, I don't, I don't know when it's going to come through. What am I supposed to tell people? Nothing. Ain't they business. Just keep believing God. Here you go. Keep being a good steward over what you have now. Mm. That's a whole nother. That's a whole nother message. Keep being a good steward over what you have now. OK. Because you can't trust God for abundance if you ain't a good steward with a little. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I can't trust God for more than I can ask or think if I'm not a good steward with what I already got. I have to be a good steward over what I have. I have to demonstrate that I'm ready for more. All you got to read is about the parable of the talents. You got to demonstrate that you're ready for more. And guess what? In that stewardship, you develop a sense of I'm grateful, but I'm not what? Yeah, I'm grateful for what I have. I'm grateful for what the God has done, but I'm not satisfied because I know there's more in him. I'm grateful because I'm good. OK, hear me on this. I'm grateful because I'm good, but I'm not positioned where I want to be to make other people good. And so therefore, I'm grateful, God, but I'm not satisfied because if just me and mine. All right. That's not a place to stick my stake in and say, this is our ground and we claim it for the wood family. No, we need more. Because others aren't on our level of faith. I'm talking about us. I'm talking about y'all up in here, up in here, up in here. I'm talking about everybody up in here. <laughs> we are on a level that we get the word. We've been getting the word before I showed up. Apostles been feeding the word into us on such a level we supposed to. Wow. Here we go again. The Spirit of God make you say stuff. You can look at it later. Be like, what in the world came out of my mouth? We are supposed to be buying up property, building on property and placing people in the property without the exorbitant fees that are being charged. 
Wait a minute, Pastor Jay. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, Pastor Jay. It was fine. We were believing for our own mortgage to be taken care of. I ain't really trying to, you know, you know, everybody, you get it how you live. Get it on your own. I did it. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps and you do it. See, that's the wrong motive. That's the wrong motive. Because really, when you open yourself up to live like that, the spirit of God is going to start pointing you to people that need that assist, that assistance. I just heard this. Everybody that we think is strong ain't as strong as we think. Wow. Everybody that we think is strong ain't as strong as we think. Oh, they don't need nothing. They got it. You just don't know. You, you just don't know. Sometimes you got to, you know, we love to. We love to look for the disheveled people. The, the people that look like they're struggling, you know, we, the people that. You know, we can just look at and be like, oh, yeah, they need some help. Let me let me come in with my godly apparel on and, and help them in the name of Jesus. Give them these two pence and tell them God bless. But listen to this. There are some people that will never let you know they have a need. That are a week away from utter ruin. So we got to be sensitive to the spirit. So when he says move on somebody that we would never think to move on, we can do it. Even when your whole flesh is telling you none of this makes sense. I'm going to embarrass myself. I'm telling them God told me to do this. I don't bit more. They don't look like they need anything. But you don't know what God knows. You just got to be obedient and faithful. Amen. So listen to this. I'm going to take about 10 or 15 minutes to go as far as I can go, and, and we'll, we'll go further later. All you have to do is show up, and I got in parentheses, by faith. Say by faith. By faith. <laughs> I love when children make confessions. What you need is already furnished and prepared. See, we got to get that. Think about what you need right now. It, it doesn't even have to be financial. Just think about whatever you need right now. And because God is Jehovah Jireh, the God who sees ahead and provides, understand that it's already been furnished and prepared. Now, that changes the whole dynamic when it's not about will God do this? He's already done it. I have to faith my way into it. Amen. Amen. Listen to this, because this is key. I'm not talking about just using faith for one area and doing what we want to do and living how we want to live in other areas. When we move in obedience to the spirit of God, everything is furnished. Y'all catch that? When we move in obedience to the spirit of God, everything is furnished. Not when we just do stuff when we want to do it. We have to move in obedience to the spirit of God. What is God saying? What is God showing me? What is God telling me to do? When I do that, everything is furnished. But I have to be moving in obedience to the spirit of God. I have to be moving the way God tells me to move. I have to be moving the way God instructs me to move. Amen. If I don't do what God tells me to do, then I can't expect God to honor what he said he would honor. He said, I watch over my word to perform it. However, if I don't obey his instructions, he's not going to watch over what I'm doing because it's not what he said. It's what I chose. So we can't get away from this is the caveat, because sometimes we I, I think sometimes we've heard prosperity preached or whatever, because they call it prosperity gospel. I don't I don't know what that is. It's just the gospel. It's the good news. If you're lacking, the good news is that God shall supply all your needs. If you're sick, the good news is that you're healed by the stripes of Jesus. I don't I don't subscribe or ascribe to some prosperity. There ain't no bunch of different facets of gospel. It's just the good news. However, in order to experience abundance the way God wants us to, we have to be obedient to the spirit of God, his leading, his guidance, his direction. And you're able to be led by the spirit by meditating on the word. What is the word saying? Because that's what God watches over to do. He watches over his. And so as long as I do what the word tells me to do, God's going to see to it that what I'm doing succeeds because I'm walking in obedience to his instructions. Amen. Amen. 
What does furnished mean? Because I, I like to define our terms. Furnished means, oh, this is so good, this is so good. Furnished means to equip fully. Oh, man. So we're furnished in abundance. We are equipped fully in abundance. There's no lack in our lives in God. Amen? Listen to this. Furnished means to provide what is needed. In verse 15 of Mark 14, we see it right there. Jesus said, and he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. I want to read that in the Amplified because I thought that was good. Because it'll give you just a little more insight into what's going on here. In verse 15 of the Amplified Classic Version. Oh, 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 go up to 14. Check this out, y'all. It says, and whatever house he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover supper with my disciples? So before you go to 15, he said, whatever house you enter into, say to who? The master of the house. So first they met the servant outside carrying the water, right? The servant walked to a house. The disciples followed the servant to the house. When the servant got in the house, Jesus is saying, whatever house that servant goes into, say to the master of the house. Once you get to the house, stop talking to the servant. Talk to the master. He says, say to the master of the house. The teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover supper with my disciples? Verse 15. And he will. What's in brackets? So the servant was told to sit down. The master said, I got this one. Ooh. So when he walked in the house and, and he said, they said what Jesus told him to say, the master himself showed him the room. What are we saying? There are some things God is only going to reveal to you personally. Yeah, you can come to church and the servant, I'm a servant of the Lord. So as a pastor, I'm telling you what God tells me to give you. But there are some things God's only going to show you when you commune with him yourself. When they showed up, it says, and he will himself, the master will do it himself. He'll show you a large upper room. Check it out. Furnished with carpets and with dining couches properly spread and ready. They are prepared for us. This wasn't no empty room. You get that. Hello. 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 No, it was furnished. They, you know, when you go to a nice spot, it, it just makes you want to chill. And then you go to some spots and it'd be like, how long we got to be here? No, it, it was furnished. It was laid out where they could relax. You know they can relax because the Bible tells us that the disciple that Jesus loved was leaning on his bosom just chilling, full as a tick. You don't do that unless you're in a spot that's comfortable. <laughs> John was laying on Jesus. My like, man, Jesus, you did it. I don't know how you came up with it, man. But can we stay overnight? This place is nice. <laughs> he was chilling. G was like, no, there's some stuff going down tonight. We ain't going to stay. We got a devil at the table with us. We ain't going to stay. Oh, but I invited the devil. Devil at the table with us. E. And I hadn't treated him any differently. Wow. Oh, okay, here we go. Maybe what we need to do is stop letting them know we know they are devil. Maybe what we need to do is when we recognize who's in our midst, when we recognize who's around us, who's leeching off of us, we keep quiet as kept. I can see it in my mind. Jesus, I see you, Judas. <laughs> I know exactly what you're doing. I know what you're about. I know why you're here. Check this out. I knew when I picked you what you would do because Jesus chose Judas. But we have no record where Jesus ever directly addressed Judas as a problem. All he told him, hey, what you do, do quickly. How do we know Jesus never said nothing bad about Judas? Because the rest of the disciples thought Judas was just going to do something for the poor. Because they said, well, he got the bad. What he do, do quickly. I guess he's just going to take care of the poor, make sure the poor are good. Okay, back up. Y'all remember what I said earlier about Jesus not being poor? Why would the disciples think that Judas was going to take care of the poor if they were poor? They would have been like, Judas is finna take care of us. So if they thought that Judas was leaving to take care of the poor, obviously Jesus and his crew were never lacking. 
Mm. Well, Pastor Jay, what about when John and John and his and his guy was walking and what was it, Peter and John? And, and they saw the, the man begging alms and they said, look on us. And he said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have give I unto you. And they said, see right there, they were broke. They ain't had nothing. That's not what he was saying. He was saying, what you're asking for ain't going to fix your situation. He said, silver and gold, I don't have it for you because that ain't going to fix your issue. But what I do have, here I go. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's what you need. <laughs> Rise up and walk. I'm going to give you what you need, not what you want. Woo-hoo. Boy, I tell you, context matters when you study the scripture. So furnish means provide what is needed. Furnish means supply. So you have to believe that God has supplied everything you need. Do I have it in my possession yet? Maybe not. But you have it in his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, we're going to talk about this a little more because I know we got to unpack this thing. I'm just really introducing it to you and we're going to rehash it and rehit it. And then maybe in about a week or two, if everything flows like I need it to or like I desire for it to, then we're going to see where the good works come in. Because once you're taken care of, God wants to make sure that now you're positioned to take care of others, but not as a as a liability where you're enabling them, but as a catalyst to jumpstart. That's so good. But as a catalyst to jumpstart their faith. Oh, Jesus. Woo! that's what who in here that no, sister Gwen. That's what Miss Martha did. She was a catalyst to jumpstart our faith. I mean, she brought all those gifts for Mother's Day. I've never seen a person do that in my life. Never seen somebody show up with two vehicles full of wrapped, personally wrapped, decorated gifts. Over 40 people. And I think I told you, I'm not sure I tell y'all so much. Sometimes I forget what I want to tell you that I don't tell you. But the Spirit of God told me, he said, what she did was a catalyst for the next level of your ministry. So if what she did was demonstrated by giving and he said what she did was a catalyst for the next level of our ministry, what the next level of our ministry going to be doing? Don't be sad, sad. Don't be scared, sad, strong. We're going to be what? Yeah. 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 OK, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Y'all give me five or so more minutes. Y'all going to give it to me? OK. All right, because, you know, if y'all be like, well, Pastor Jay, it's, you know, been a long weekend. If you can wrap it up real quick, you know, <laughs> go and wrap it up and <laughs> we'll be back next week. I swear for a lot. We'll be back next week. No, <laughs> I want to make sure y'all ready. Y'all ready for me? OK, y'all ready for us because I ain't up here in my own strip. OK, check this out. This is not this is necessary now more than ever. This furnishing abundance series because of this statement I'm about to make. Trusting in God. Wow. Will deliver us from the uncertainty and instability of this world system. Oh, y'all remember y'all remember 2019, the last quarter of 2019, where the spirit of God started telling us around August or September that a wave was coming. And he said, and you're going to have to ride this wave by faith. And y'all remember what happened around March of 2020. And we thought, oh, Lord, that's the way. No, 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 no. That was just the first round of waves. There's a whole shift in the way things are done in this planet occurring. And he said, there's a wave coming and you're going to have to ride this wave by what? Faith. So now he's telling us trusting in God will deliver us from the uncertainty and instability of this world system. So on the heels of that, this is what he said. We must not let. OK, OK, now y'all got to catch this because I put a lot of stock in how God communicates a thing. So the first thing he communicated was trusting in God will deliver us from the uncertainty and instability of this world system. That's what he said initially. Then he follows up with this. We must not let. So that means the answer is trusting in God. However, if he's saying we must not let, that means it still falls on us as to whether or not the instability and the uncertainty of this world negatively impacts us. Because he's given us the answer first. He said, trusting in God will deliver you from the uncertainty and instability of this world system. Then he follows up and said, we must not let the uncertainty and instability of this world negatively impact our faith. So that means if I'm believing God for a particular thing, 
and then the world goes haywire and I amend or I downgrade my belief because of what happened in the world, I'm letting the world adjust my faith instead of allowing faith to adjust the world conditions. Yeah. Oh, God. Our lives have already been furnished and prepared by God in abundance. OK, catch it. Second Corinthians chapter nine. And then I'm going to stop right here. Yeah, I think this is a good place to stop. I almost feel like, well, I stopped two weeks ago, but I, I said much more than two weeks ago. So I think we're in a good place. I'll say this again, then I'll read. You got to amplify a classic good. We must not let the uncertainty and instability of this world system negatively impact our faith. Our lives have already been furnished and prepared by God in abundance. So not only did he furnish and prepare, not only did he provide and supply, he did it in abundance. He does exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. So he never does anything just enough. He never does anything just enough. God never just barely makes it. Whatever he does, he does it in abundance. So let's look at this in the Amplified Version. It says, and God is able. Who's able? What? Okay. So, no, I'm not. I was going to start calling names, but I reminded myself that we record this for view later, so I don't want to start calling that. This doesn't say, and Jason is able. I can call my own name. I'm going to call my wife's name, too. This does not say, and Melody is able. I'm going to call my dad's name. And this does not say, and Leonard is able. This does not say, and Renee is able. <laughs> she might give it. This does not say, and Joyce is able. Tell her I call her name. <laughs> This says, and God is able. Who's able? So if, if right now we don't see ourselves anywhere in this, do we? Who's able? So who do we need to be looking at? OK, OK. Just want to make sure we're all on the same page. And God is able to make all grace, every favor and what? Earthly blessing. I got to go back to it. Uh, put Ephesians chapter one, verse three back on the screen, A.V. Y'all quit. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in where? In who? No, in where? In who? Come on. Oh, Jesus. So this was already ordained by God before Jesus ever was manifested in the earth because God already knew who Jesus was going to be. And Christ ain't his last name. Christ is who he is. Christ means anointed one, means a Messiah. So his name ain't Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So that's how he did it. How do we get it, though? Back to 2 Corinthians 9, 8, Amplified Classic. OK, God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to us in abundance. Now, how do we get every favor and earthly blessing through God's what? Top of the class today, boy, top of the class. We're able to receive every favor and earthly blessing through his grace. That's why the scripture says, I think, in Ephesians 2, for by grace are you saved through faith. So everything necessary for provision and salvation is by grace. And the way we experience it is through faith. So, wow, that's a good analogy. Okay, that's a good analogy. Okay, 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 okay. Most of the time, I, 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 I like to wash my own car. But every now and then if I'm rushing up, like I park under a tree and some birds had a party over my car. Y'all know what I mean? So I don't have to be so I don't have to be crashed. Some birds had a part over my car. <laughs> I'll drive to one of them quick things real quick because it's, it's like I can't go pick up. You know, I was going somewhere to have lunch with my baby. And I said, I can't pick her up with with bird stuff all over the roof. <laughs> you know, that ain't going to look too good. So you run your car through there. And, 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 and grace is the car wash you go through. But if you don't align yourself, see, they got little blocks. There's a track you have to line up with, but there are blocks that go the length of the car wash. And if you don't get lined up on that block properly, you ain't going through. So what faith is, oh glory, faith is the block that brings you through the wash. See, what you need is in the wash. 
You don't have to, you don't have to pick what you want while the water's going. You put it in, boop, 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 make your choice, and then you go through. The blocks of faith carry you through the grace of the wash to get you where you need to be. In the same way, oh glory, grace is the overarching power that supplies everything we need. Faith is the vehicle that carries us through it. So it's by grace that we're saved through faith. Faith is the vehicle. If I don't go through by faith, I'm not going to experience what God has graced me with. We got to go through by faith. I believe what God says, so I'm going through here. I believe what God says, so I'm going to do this. I believe what God says, so I'm going to release my faith for it. Okay, I say that, Lord. Where did I stop? Right here. Okay, let me finish reading this because this is good. My five minutes left like five minutes ago. It says, and God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. Come to you in what? Abundance. Wow, there goes that word again. So he ain't doing it just to do it. He's going to make it come to you in abundance. Why? So that you may always. Why? Wow. You ever ask yourself that when you're reading the scriptures, when he says what he's going to do? Sometimes you ought to ask yourself why you're going to do it. And then when you keep reading, the why will be given. So God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. Say why? So that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished <laughs> in abundance for every. What kind of good work? Good. What kind, though? Every what kind? What kind of good work? Every. Every. every good work. Lord, should I do this? Is it a good work? Then you got permission. Ooh. Sometimes we wonder, well, should I get involved? Is it a good work? Then you got permission because he will grace you. You'll be oh, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. So the abundance is supposed to position us to be able to be a blessing when the need arises. <laughs> Lord, help me. Lord, help me say this without I ain't trying to. Y'all know I don't do the condemnation game, right? I ain't trying to put nobody else in a bad light. And, and, and I, I know, I, I know, because we're supposed to believe for the best, and, but we're not supposed to be spending every week of every Sunday talking about get a bigger house, get a bigger car, get all the watches, get all the jewelry. Look, help me say it, sweet Lord. Those are just things. What God is concerned about is us <laughs> being self-sufficient. Possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. So the reason I got multiple causes is because when the need arises, what I'm going to do with it? Say it with your chest. I'm going to do what? Give it, Give it away. I shouldn't be getting multiple causes just to say, ah, oh, look at my garage. <laughs> Woo! Look at it. Look at this. Come here. Look at it. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Ain't she pretty? I ain't gonna even crank her up. If I crank her up for her, you ain't gonna be happy. I'm telling you. Now, there are some things I ain't even gotta say it. Y'all already know the type of vehicle I'm believing for, the type of vehicle I'm desiring, because it ain't the family vehicle at all, so I gotta put my faith on it. You know? You know. You know. I'm looking at my boy. You know! But what I can't do is have 10 of them at home. As little demigod as demigods. I can't look at it like, oh yes. Because I've got this, this makes me better than you. See, this this proves that I'm better than you because I can afford this many. We don't say it, we don't articulate it, but we think it. You know how I know we think it? Because when somebody shows up with the better than what we got, we don't like what we got no more. Oh Lord. <laughs> That's why you got to embrace what you got and appreciate what you got and treat what you got like it's what you want. Oh, Amen. treat what you got like it's what you want. Sometimes when I'm driving, I'm just going and I'm going to get ready to wrap this up. Sometimes when I'm driving, I picture myself and I imagine myself driving the coupe that I desire. So the body gets wider. The motor gets bigger in my mind. The exhaust gets louder in my mind. 
And when I tap the gas, I don't hear silence. I hear whoa in my mind. <laughs> so when one passed me, I say, there goes my baby. <laughs> there she is. My children know I call it out by name. I believe I received my blank, blank, blank. It's mine. I have it now. See, I had to amend it a few times. And I said this a couple of years ago. I had to, y'all thought I gave up on it, didn't you? I ain't gave up on it. I had to amend it because before, you couldn't get them wide. They came narrow. Like the straight street. But then they widened them. <laughs> and, and you can get it supercharged, but I don't like the name of it. So the one I want is naturally aspirated. 6.4 liters of natural aspiration. <laughs> and it'll talk to you. So instead, sometimes, when, now what am I in? I'm in a, in a sedan. Of just as smooth as it can be. It's, it's, what is that? Eight, so it's 14 years old. But sometimes I go to that place. When I'm driving what I've been believing for. And it makes me go home and wash what I got with gratitude. Because if I take care of what I got, that day I'll, I tell my wife all the time, I said, baby, when it come through, we hitting the road, we burning the tank. I don't know where we going. But when we come through, we hitting the road and we burning a tank. We'll find out where the kids go when they go, but we ain't taking them with us. We burning a tank. <laughs> See, I got to prepare myself for that place. If it takes 10 years, I don't care because that ain't my main pursuit. It's a desire of my heart. Oh, oh, oh. Here you go. Desires of your heart, you can entrust those to God and not concern yourself with the timing. Oh, Jesus. I'll say that again. Desires of your heart, you can entrust those to God and not concern yourself with the timing. Mm. Mm. Okay. Last place I'm going to go. Psalms 37, because that, that's, that's not in the sermon notes. But we got to see that. Because he'll give you the desires of your heart. Y'all believe that? Okay. Check this out. Oh, man. Okay. But it's conditional. Say conditional. So that means whatever the desire of my heart is, it, 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 it's not going to benefit nobody else but me. It's just a desire of my heart. But that desire being made manifest is conditional. Say conditional. conditional. Psalms chapter 37. OK, they got verse one. So we'll start at verse one. We're going to start at verse one. It says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither, ooh, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. This is for those of us that look at people that's not living the life of God, but they living better than we are. And we look at them and be like, how can they live on that level when I'm trying to live for God and I'm barely making it and they don't care nothing about God and they got stacks on stacks and racks on racks? That verse is for them. That verse is for those times where we see people don't care anything about God, but on the surface, it looks like they living high on the hog. I say on the surface because things aren't always as they appear. And sometimes that thing that you're looking at that you think has them living a good life is the very thing they would trade in in a moment for just a little bit of peace. Verse two. For they shall soon. Uh oh. Now, you don't pray this over them. Just understand that this is the this is the result of living in iniquity. It says, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb, you know. I don't know if I can go there. Can I say that? Huh? You know, sometimes the people we grow up with that are doing things illegally and living a high life, when we become grown, they ain't doing that no more. They might not be living that high life anymore. They might be stripped of their freedom. This is what, that's, what, that's what verse 2 is talking about. They'll soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. What it's saying is that that high life they live in is not sustainable because I'm because I'm not supporting it. Wow. So when we look at it, be like, man, if I could just if they just let me hold a little bit of what they got. Man, but uh -uh, uh, -uh, uh, uh, no, 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 no. Give yourself a break because it won't last. 
Because the Bible said they'll soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the herb. Why? Because God's not sustaining it. Oh, Jesus, that's heavy. Ain't it? Verse three. Here we go. Now he's going to start talking to us. He said that was them. This for y'all. <laughs> he said, trust in the Lord and do good. Talking about those good works, right? Do good. So shall you dwell in the land and verily, truly, you shall be fed. Verse four. Here we go. If I do verse three, verse four applies. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he, who is he? The Lord God shall give thee, who is thee? Say me. me. Say thee is me. me. So we can read that. If I delight myself also in the Lord, he shall give me the desires of my heart. Those unarticulated things that I don't talk to people about. It's just me. It's, what's on, it's a desire of my heart. Check it out. Verse five. Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And you'll be able to bring it to pass. Huh? Who called it? Who's going to bring it to pass? He shall. he shall. Not me. I don't commit my way to bringing it to pass. I commit my way to the Lord. I trust in him and he'll bring it to pass. What is he going to bring to pass? The desires of my heart. So we get we get it mixed up. We commit our way to. Ooh. We commit our way to our desires and try to bring them to pass on our own. But what God is saying is, hey, I give you the desires of your heart. If you commit your way to me, commit the way you do things to me, trust in me and I'll bring the desires of your heart to pass because I know what they are anyway. I had a hand in birthing them in you in the first place. But we get the order mixed up. We chase the desires and we just give God whatever we got left. Like I'm going to put everything I got into achieving this desire. And when I ain't tired or when I got some time, Lord, I'll talk to you. But that's not his order. He said, if you want me to give you the desires of your heart, you got to trust in me. And then you got to commit your way to me. Commit your way to me. Commit the way you move to me. Trust me. And I, whoo, that's a promise from God. And I will bring it to pass. Why he gonna bring it to pass? Because if I trust him, I gotta trust his word. Because God's will and his word are synonymous. If you wanna know what God's will is, get in his word. Now, if I trust his word, which is his will, he'll bring his will to pass in my life because he watches over his word or his will to perform it. Now, do you see how all this is interconnected? So he's never going to do anything apart from his word. He's never going to do anything apart from his word. He didn't send Jesus apart from his word. Jesus is the word made flesh. <laughs> And he used what was in the beginning with him to redeem all of us. So now we can receive everything we need from him. But we got to change how we perceive things. I got to get this. I got to figure out a way. No, 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 no. It's not about figuring out a way. It's about committing ourselves to his way. Jesus said it in John 14, verse six. He said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. They're not a bunch of different ways. He said, I'm the way. Follow me. I'm the truth. Trust me. I'm the life. Live out of me. So we receive everything from God through trusting in the word, which is Jesus. And so I've been trying to get I've been trying to tell you, I spoke to one of my brothers last week. But I've been trying to get you all trying to get to a place to where I could share this with you on the spirit of God. Had moved so powerfully the last two weeks, I wasn't able to share it. I just, it didn't come to mind. But I want y'all to commit to this. Oh, oh, that's good. Lord, you set me up. I want y'all to commit to this. Okay? Y'all ready? I want y'all, if you're watching this, I want you to commit to this too. It's not, it's not a big sacrifice of your time, but it is a commitment. A commitment is something you do even when you don't feel like it. 
Y'all feel me? So we're going to commit ourselves to do this. I pray you will. I can't force you to do it. I've got some spiritual authority on your life, but I'm not a dictator. I can't make you do anything. I can pray for you to do it. I can, I can ask you to do it. I can implore you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to do this. Commit your way unto the Lord. This is what he told me. He actually gave me in April, and I'm just not able to give it to y'all. Give God 10 minutes a day. Every day, give God 10 minutes in his word. Just 10 minutes. Why are we saying, why are you saying, but Pastor, I can do more than 10. No, 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 no. We ain't talking about what you can do. We're talking about creating a lifestyle of giving God time every day in his word. I'm not talking about reading the whole chapter for two days and then not opening the Bible up for another two months. We want consistency and we want to create a lifestyle of this. So just 10 minutes. If you go more, that's fine. But at the bare minimum, every single day, give God 10 minutes in his word. Every say every day. Amen. This is a commitment. It's, it's, it's no less powerful than when I stood before a crowd in, in October 18th of 2003 and said, I take this woman to be my lawful little wedded wife. I made a commitment to her. There were some times and there are some days when we ain't feeling husbandly and wifey toward each other. But we still committed. There were some times in, in the early days where we wondered, did we make a mistake? But we were still committed. There was sometimes when this girl couldn't stand my breath and I couldn't stand her guts, but we were still committed. Because a commitment is something I do even when I don't feel like doing it. I don't feel like reading. I don't feel like praying. What, do you feel like being sick? Do you feel like dying prematurely? Do you feel like lacking? Do you feel like being depressed? Do you feel like being worried? Do you feel like being alone? Because if you don't commit to his way, the enemy is going to make sure you experience all those other things. We can't commit to a way we don't know. He ain't asking. He could have said, tell him, tell him to get in my word for an hour. <laughs> we would have been like, ooh, Jesus. He said 10 minutes. 10 minutes a day, every day. Now, studies have shown that if you do a thing for 21 consecutive days, it becomes a habit. So he said, bad man, 21 uninterrupted days, 10 minutes a day in his word. So if today is the fifth, 21 days from now would be what? June 26th. Let's just say the whole month of June. Every day, 10 minutes a day in the word. Now, he didn't tell me this, but however, for me, I would recommend New Testament reading because that's what's going to feed your faith the most. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the Old Testament. I love Old Testament. Look, we just, <laughs> it's an Old Testament scripture on the board right now. But we're trying to build our faith and we're trying to learn his way. And Jesus revealed that he is the way, the truth and the life. And he revealed that in the Gospels. So I highly advise you to spend your 10 minutes a day in the New Testament. And if you've already read Matthew, Mark, Luke and R. John, start with Acts. Start with Acts to see how we're supposed to look, how we're supposed to be functioning. Acts is how we're supposed to be looking. The book of Acts is how we're supposed to be living because that's the early church. The early church should never have stopped being the church. It shows us. Oh, that's good. It shows us what we're capable of. It shows us what we've fallen from. It shows us what we can embrace again. We shouldn't read. We shouldn't read the Bible like a history lesson. Like, wow, that was amazing. Wow. Wow. Mm, the Magna Carta. Woo. Wow. That's so great. Oh, Columbus discovered America. Wow. Don't have nothing to do with you today. And it's faulty in itself. <laughs> but wow, it's in the book. No, we in this because this is my life. This is how I'm going to rise above this world system. This is how I'm going to rise above my limitations. This is how I'm going to rise above my weakness. This is how I'm going to rise above my frailties. This is how I'm going to rise above my distrust. This is how I'm going to rise above my fear. This is how I'm going to rise above everything that's holding me back. This is how I'm going to rise above the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places I'm fighting against that I don't even know about. I'm going to spend time with the word every day. And I'm going to open myself up to hear from him. 21 days, uninterrupted, 10 minutes a day. 
you'll be surprised at what the Spirit of God starts showing you. Well, Pastor Jay, I don't believe in speaking in tongues. I ain't say you'll be surprised when you start speaking in tongues. I said you'll be surprised at what the Spirit of God will show you. You don't have to operate with the gift of speaking in tongues for the Spirit of God to show you something out of the Word. So don't, don't, don't back away from it because I said you'll be surprised what the Spirit of God showed you. You're a believer. The Spirit of God is in you now. And he'll show you what God was talking about when he authored these scriptures. Yeah, you're going to have to push through some times where you're reading a verse and you don't get it. It's not making sense. You know why you, want, you won't be getting it? Because you're trying to process it with your head. You're trying to make it make sense in your current situation in this current culture. Don't try to read it to make sense. Just feed your faith. These 10 minutes a day for the next 21 days, I'm just feeding my spirit. I might not get no natural understanding from it, but my spirit man going to eat good for 10 minutes every day. Yeah. And you'll be surprised at how the spirit of God start talking to you. What do I mean by talking to you? you it, I call it my mom termed the phrase. I don't think it's original to her, but there was sometimes the spirit of God will communicate with you. And it, it's never an audible voice, but there are times when I can tell the spirit of God is speaking directly to me. And there are times where I know it's a divine communication, but it's almost like the spirit of God ain't really talking directly to me. And she said, well, those are what we call spiritual impressions. Well, the spirit of God will impress some information upon me. I can I can tell by the way it comes out that it wasn't God saying something directly to me, but it's a spiritual impression because of the word that's in me. So I can trust it because it's word based and it here you go. And it matches what the word says already. See, if, if I'm hearing something from God that doesn't match what he said in his word, that's a problem. Because God will never say anything to me that contradicts his word. And what this is going to also help you to do is going to help you insulate yourself from these rising false religions that are popping up on every corner of the block. Declaring things to be that are not. So you can know the truth for yourself. Well, if Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life, no man comes into the Father but by me. If it's somebody on the corner telling me it's another way to God, although they might be very adamant about it, although they might have a lot of folks with them, although they might have speakers on every corner and music blaring and they look like they committed to it. But if they saying that Jesus ain't the way, I can step back and be like, oh, that's a beautiful lie. <laughs> look at that lie. Ooh, it's draped up real nice. But the Bible tells me Jesus is the only way. And so anybody, any entity that dismisses Jesus as the son of God, I know from the Bible not to believe it. Doesn't matter how strongly they decree it. Doesn't matter how passionate they are about it. The word tells me that Jesus is the only way to God. I believe it. Now, I'm not trying to make other people look bad about it. I respect their position. I just don't agree with it. We got to get to that place where we're spiritually mature enough to respect another person's decision and still not agree with it. <laughs> wow, that's kind of that's kind of harsh, but I, I heard it. you have to respect people's position and want to go to hell. Some people choose to reject Christ and choosing to reject Christ is to accept going to hell. And they're adamant about it. And you can't get, and you can't fuss your way into changing them. If that's the choice they want to make. Hey, I love you anyway. If you want more information, if you want to talk to me about it, I don't know everything about the Bible. But if you want to talk, I'd love to talk to you about it. I'm going to go to the word and find out for myself. And so if you got a question, I'm going to look for it. and I'm going to see. And then we'll go from there. But I'm not going to say, oh, oh y'all going to hell because Jesus is the only way. No, before you made the Lord, Jesus, your Lord said you were going to hell right with him. <laughs> when you born to this earth, you born going to hell. The only thing that redeems us from hell is a choice. A decision to make Jesus our Lord. And he perfects us along the way. We don't get perfect then and decide to get into the kingdom. We get into the kingdom and he perfects us as we go. Amen. Wow. That was the longest five minutes I ever seen. It's a good five minutes. 
Praise God. Furnished in the abundance. Boy, I tell you. Whew. Wow. Wow. What, what blesses me about this is God could not teach this to us if we weren't mature enough to handle it. And that's that's what that's what humbled me when he first gave it to me, because I've never taught. I've touched on abundance from time to time, especially in the kingdom nuggets. But I've never taught specifically along these lines because I don't teach anything God doesn't give me. So for him to give us this in this time, in this season, is because we have reached a place of maturity in him where we can handle it. And I believe that part of the reason why he's telling us to get in that word for 10 minutes a day every day is because he wants to make sure that we stay mature. He doesn't want us to regress back into our way of understanding. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, that's all I got for you today. If you got something out of that, give the Lord a hand, clap of praise. Ooh. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. And to our online crew, we appreciate you fellowshipping with us. We pray that you were blessed by something you heard today. Remember this. You are empowered by faith. You are equipped for service and your success is in God's word. We love you. Be blessed in Jesus' name.